Hello everyone, my name is Jose and today I will be going over several problems on using the appropriate corner system to take um, for each solid. So my first problem is set up the triple integral between the cone z equals x squared plus y squared and the plane z equals 5. So right here I have my picture of the cone and then I'm just drawing the plane z equals 5. So the system that I will be using for this solid is a cylindrical and the reason why I'm choosing cylindrical is because uh, using the, I can try and use spherical but it wouldn't be the best method since it does not involve a sphere, so I will be using cylindrical. Uh, in my second step, I will be setting up the boundaries. So the boundaries that we use in cylindrical are Z, R, and Beta. So, for Z, um, the lower surface would be the cone, which is right here, and that is um, Z equals square root of X squared plus Y squared. But notice that the rest of the limits rely on R and data, so therefore I will use this polar corner uh, equation, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and I will substitute z equals square root of r squared, and you take the square root of that, and then you get r as the lower limit of the surface, and then the upper limit is just where the plane intersects at z equals 5. And now for the radius, we just look at the bottom, which is at 0, and it goes up as high as where the plane intersects, which is 5. And since the solid goes around the xy plane, our data goes from 0 all the way to 2 pi. So those are our boundaries for this function, or the solid. Now we just have to set up the triple integral. And that will be f of r cosine data, since we are now plugging in for f of x, y, z, dv. So it will be f of r cosine data, r sine data, and z, r dr dz d data. And that is the appropriate triple integral for the solid. So in this problem, I will be setting up the triple integral between the two top hemispheres of radius 4 and radius 2, with the first octant cut out. So the method I will use to set up this integral will be spherical. Coordinates. And the reason why I chose a um, spherical is because a hemisphere is just half of a sphere. So it'll make the transition a lot smoother. In my second step, I will be setting up the limits, boundaries.
So since we're using spherical coordinates, our boundaries will rely on rho p and data. So our radius goes from two to four. So our low, lower limit will be two. Our upper will be four. The phi is just um, the distance from the positive z-axis all the way down. So we start at zero, and it goes all the way down to pi over two. And for data, since this since both hemispheres are on the xy plane, and we cut out, we eliminate the first quadrant or first Stockton when it's in 3D. We start at pi over 2 all the way to 2 pi. And so those are our limits for this hemisphere. Step three is to write the triple integral. So now we will be changing our functions of f of x and y and z to spherical coordinates. So that will be rho, sine phi, cosine data, rho, sine phi, sine data, and rho, cosine phi times uh, the Jacobian, which is rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d data. And that is our triple integral. So for this problem, um, I will be setting up the triple integral between this cylinder and uh, this plane that cuts it. So within the cylinder of radius 3 and above the xy plane and below the plane x plus y plus z equals 3. So the method I will use for this will be um, cylindrical coordinates since it involves a cylinder. It will make everything flow a lot smoother if we use that method. Uh, step two. So for step two, I will find the limits. So in cylindrical coordinates, our limits rely on z, rely on r, z, and data. So since we have a cylinder of radius 3, if you draw that cylinder in an xy plane, it's just a circle of radius 3. So it'll go from 0 to 3. And for our z limits, it's the cylinder starts at the bottom, where z equals 0. And, it's go, and it goes as high as where the plane intersects it. And our plane for that is z equals 3 minus x minus y. But notice that our other two limits rely on r and data. So we have to change x and y into functions of r and data. So in polar coordinates, x equals r cosine data and y equals r sine data. 
So we have to substitute these two in for x and y. So now we get x equal z equals 3 minus r sine data plus cosine data. We put that here. 3 minus r cosine data plus sine data. And since it's a cylinder and it goes around the xy plane, our little limit is 0. And it does one revolution around the xy plane, so it goes all the way to 2 pi. Step three, we set up the triple integral. So now we have to change our function of f of x, y, and z, and adjust it to cylindrical coordinates. So it'll be f of r cosine data for the x, r sine data for y, z. And then since we're using polar coordinates, we have to add the Jacobian, which is an extra r. And it'll be dz dr d theta. So our first limits depend on z. Second limits go from 0 to 3, which is for r. And the last limits go from 0 to 2 pi, which goes with theta. And that is our triple integral. For this problem, so here I'll be setting up the triple integral for an orange wedge at an angle of power 4 along the positive z-axis of a radius equals 4. So the method I'll be using for this problem will be spherical because if you draw a sphere and then you cut part of it, a wedge. So these wedges make up the sphere. They're just slices of the sphere. So that's why I'll be using spherical coordinates for this problem. Step two, I might find my limits. So spherical coordinates rely on the limits of rho, data. So our radius is just from is just four. So it'll go from zero to four. Since rho and spherical coordinates represent the radius. Our phi notice that the wedge goes from the positive z axis all the way down. So and the positive z-axis starts at 0 for phi, and it goes all the way down, so it goes from 0 to pi. And our data is just the distance from dx y plane all the way around. So in this case, it just goes from 0 to pi over 4, since that's what it's, that is what it's given to us. Step three, we just set up our triple integral. So it'll go from zero to pi over four, zero to pi, zero to four. F of rho sine phi. Sine data, row, sine phi, sine data, row, cosine phi, multiplied by the Jacobians, which is row squared, sine phi, d rho, d phi, d data. 
So in spherical coordinates, x equals rho sine phi cosine theta, because we have to plug in for the x, y, and z. Uh, y equals rho sine phi sine theta, and z equals rho cosine phi. And this, is a, this is just a Jacobian's right here. And notice that our rho goes with our limits, 0 to 4. Phi has limits 0 to pi over 4. And data has limits 0 to pi over 4. So this is our triple integral for this wedge.